From the early days of women's involvement in media industries, varying levels of harassment and violence have been a routine part of their lived experience. Mostly shrugged off as just part of the job, or more unusually challenged formally via internal complaints procedures or external routes such as tribunals. Most recently, the Me Too movement entered newsrooms, with several prominent news reporters speaking out about gendered discrimination and harassment in the news business. Ultimately, this led to the resignation and dismissal of a number of high-profile male journalists and anchors. Then there was the Time's Up campaign in 2018, which saw a group of senior international editors and academics, me among them, calling for industry reform to defend women media workers against workplace violence, harassment and discrimination. You know, it was very sobering for me. I was sitting with a local journalist, a woman, uh, a few weeks ago uh, in Upper Egypt, and uh, there were complaints against her behavior within the newsroom, and she was saying to me, but do you understand how difficult it is for me every day to discuss with my parents as I leave the home that I have the right to do this and do this job, that I have to get onto public transport where I will probably be harassed, and I try and protect myself against that. And then I finally reach an office which is dominated by men, and they don't make me feel comfortable. And when she said this to me, it all of a sudden, you know, clicked that it's really really hard and to dis to say that you know it's just about the workplace it's about women's lives generally you know uh, and how difficult sometimes it can be and how many impediments they have to cross in order to find themselves in the workplace to start with so so there's that aspect to it and it's not just about gender also I mean class here and education level also play big roles in how they are perceived and the um, area within which they can move freely and safely and so there are also those factors to, to take into consideration what Me Too has done is that it's created uh, a sort of an international uh, discourse that makes it more possible for people, if they are courageous enough, to discuss this. It makes it less acceptable for harassment or um, infringements against the privacy and sort of personal space of women to take place and be talked about or accepted uh, by the men themselves. And so creating that uh, sense that there's something wrong with this is something which is in and of itself, even though it seems like a small thing, but very empowering. Also what it's done is that it's for me as an Egyptian journalist, always, you know, you get these programs for gender and improvement. And there's this idea that there's something wrong with our part of the world as opposed to the sophisticated West, which doesn't have these problems and when women have gained their rights. What Me Too has done is that it said that, no, this is a problem that is everywhere and is facing women working in media everywhere and in entertainment and, 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 and this is empowering in a way because it means that there's not something wrong with me specifically or the, you know, my social context specifically, but with the world. And so let's work together on improving that. Recently, surveys from industry bodies have powerfully demonstrated the threats and risks faced by women journalists. In 2014, a joint report by the International News Safety Institute and the International Women's Media Foundation found that women journalists have long suffered sexual violence and harassment at work. Almost a thousand women took the survey and two thirds of them reported experiencing some kind of intimidation or threats or abuse in relation to their work. Most of these incidents had occurred in the workplace and were perpetrated by male bosses or supervisors or co-workers. The survey results also indicated that most incidents of harassment and violence were never reported, even though a majority of women said it had psychologically affected them. Many women expressed fear about the repercussions that reporting such abuse could have on their careers, and they indicated that they're used to being regarded as the problem, as a costly inconvenience, and discouraged from speaking out. So, I mean, first of all, that there has to be, these people have to feel that they're going to be protected, supported and helped when they get raised it up to management level. Um, and uh, so I, I encourage an absolute open transparency and, and, you know, tell them to tell me, even if they think it's minor, it might not be, you know. So tell me, it's better to know, better to look into it and know that it's minor, that we've, we've researched it. Uh, I've also told them that there's no judgment, no blame. And I think that that's a really big issue for women is that they feel like that it's going to hamper their careers, they're going to be judged by it, they're going to be almost become the, the sort of the, the, the victims 
even if they, you know, in a different way, not just the victim of, of the actual harassment, but the victim of, of then reporting it. So I think, you know, letting women know that none of that is going to happen, that this is an absolutely free space for them to do so. I think strengthening HR processes in, in large organizations, and I should I should stress that I'm, I'm largely newsroom based, so, you know, my team will be coming to me in a, a, around our newsroom issues. So strengthening HR processes where they can go to somebody and speak in a, in a confidential, private, circumstances is also hugely important and then I mean I think there's some work to be done around safety aspects you know we think a lot about the safety of our, the physical safety of our, our journalists I think the mental safety of our journalists is becoming even um, more pressing in this day and age so looking at what processes we have to help that because this feeds very much into it you can get just as bad you know PTSD from being harassed online as you can from witnessing something in the field so you know we have to be mindful of those things. Then in 2017, an International Federation of Journalists survey revealed that almost one in two women journalists have suffered sexual harassment, psychological abuse, online trolling and other forms of gender-based violence while doing their jobs of holding the powerful to account. That survey also showed that very few media organisations worldwide have taken concrete steps to respond to such abuse. Although around half of journalists' unions have adopted policies to tackle violence against women reporters. Women journalists working outside their workplace, in both their local communities as well as further afield, have been harassed and threatened and attacked and even killed while doing their jobs and because of their reporting. This is not to say, of course, that male colleagues haven't also experienced violence but that women are especially targeted because of their gender as well as their profession. 2017 was a particularly deadly year for women journalists. The average of women reporters killed between 2006 and 2016 was 7% of the total number of killed journalists, according to UNESCO. That's the UN body measuring journalism safety interventions. But in 2017, that figure rose to 19% of the overall total. The historic difference may be partly explained by the fact that traditionally fewer women journalists have covered conflict zones. However, simply pointing to a perceived rise in the number of women working in war zones in recent years doesn't adequately account for the increased casualty numbers because most of the women journalists killed in 2017 weren't working in active war zones. Lauren Wolfe, who's the director of the Under Siege program at the Women's Media Centre, says it could be because women are also covering more dangerous beats or rounds, as well as reporting from dangerous locations. It might also be due to the risks that are spreading to Western developed democracies that have been historically considered lower risk environments for journalists. Take the awful case of murdered freelance journalist Kim Wall, who was murdered by her source in the waters off Copenhagen in August 2017. She'd travelled the world reporting from places that experience conflict and instability, but she was killed in a country that's widely celebrated for gender advancement. Danish inventor Peter Madsen was later found guilty of her premeditated murder and sexual assault. A few months later, the investigative journalist Daphne Caruana Galizia was killed when a bomb placed under her car detonated close to her home in Malta. She was investigating corruption with ties to the state. Since her death, international NGOs, European parliamentarians, UNESCO and media support organisations have called on the Maltese government to properly investigate her death amid accusations of impunity. Before she was killed, Caruana Galizia endured frequent threats and spoke about being called a witch. There were clear gendered aspects to the intimidation she suffered and the impunity that surrounded those threats and preceded her killing. The deaths of Daphne, Caruana Galizia and Kim Wall highlight the specific vulnerabilities that women journalists face and the fact that the threat of gender-based violence extends to environments not traditionally regarded as hostile. What's more, the nature of their deaths was particularly gruesome, and it reflects what Elisa Liz Munoz of the International Women's Media Foundation calls new levels of violence and retribution that deserve special attention. 
Similarly, the death of the Indian investigative journalist Gauri Lankesh also drew international attention to the risks faced by women journalists, those who are openly critical of their own governments, amid calls for their killers to be brought to justice. Lankesh, who was shot dead outside her home, was known for being a critic of right-wing Hindu extremism. In the days after her killing, trolls took to social media to celebrate, describing her as a, quote, bitch. And the country's Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, was criticised for following some of the same accounts on Twitter. In Mexico, Miroslava Breach spent the days before her murder in March 2017 documenting the murders of others in the drug war in her country, which has been consistently ranked among the most dangerous places in the world to be a journalist, and particularly a female journalist. But if the voices of these women journalists are silenced, so too, by extension, are the voices of more than half the world's population, something that has an egregious impact on press freedom, democracy and gender equality at large. The International News Safety Institute's 2012 book, No Woman's Land, on the front lines with female reporters, was collated after the sexual assault of CBS correspondent Lara Logan in Egypt's Tahrir Square. In it, 40 women journalists paint a global picture of the daily risks of mob-related attacks, harassment from public officials and sexual advances, often perpetrated by those who are supposed to protect them in their work. The book also sheds light on the very specific access that women can gain in closed societies to the stories of other women and children whose voices are rarely heard. It's noteworthy too that in states where conflict or post-conflict environments reinforce existing gender stereotypes, women and girls experience particular vulnerabilities and the threat of violence is therefore higher. In November 2017, the United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution with a particular gender focus, condemning unequivocally all specific attacks on women journalists in the exercise of their work, including sexual and gender-based discrimination and violence, intimidation and harassment, online and offline. The resolution reflects many of the recommendations in the UN Secretary-General's report from earlier in 2017 on the safety of women journalists, which came at a pivotal moment in the history of women's involvement in journalism as the Me Too movement kicked into higher gear.